Hey guys, it's Adam Harrison, Lisa Go Off Guitar Builder, and uh, just a quick one today. I just wanted to do a little catch up um, since I last spoke to you. Um, just wanted to give you an idea of this is probably taken, this particular guitar, if you can see the frets on this, just try and get some light on it. Let's see if we can get the shine on it. A couple of things. When you, and this is in relation to the last video that I did, which was um, a little scathing on um, someone who was selling a, a Sagawas guitar with wonky frets. Um, and that's an understatement, but you know my stance on it. Um, one of the things that I do when I build a guitar is I just, I do a spot check before I do anything. Once I've installed the frets on the fretboard, actually let's go back before that. The very first thing I do with the fretboard is make sure that the fretboard's level. Before I start fretting, I make sure it's level. I make sure it's straight. I make sure that there's no bend in it, going, especially going down, because if there's a bend in it going down, it's gonna buzz like crazy in this area here. Okay. Bending up a little bit isn't too bad, as long as it's not too much. If it's just a tiny bit, that's fine. Um, but remember, the string tension, even on a three string, is still quite strong. So a, a, a very straight neck can end up with a little bit of an upward bow. Um, if you've got a very straight neck, what you can find is that when you put the frets in, the argument is that there's a minimum, a, a little tiny bit of bow, it'll push the neck into that shape, right? Obviously that's an exaggeration. But the frets in there are taking up space. They're spreading the timber apart ever, 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 ever so slightly. So the argument with guitar builders is that, and that's the reason for a truss rather than a six string guitar as well, that a dead straight neck, when it's got frets in, uh, may bow backwards. So the idea is to pull it up. So if you've got a very slightly, and I always try, when I get a piece of timber that I'm gonna use on a neck, I always check the timber and I always try and make sure that it is either dead straight or it's got a very slight, you know, you can see it when you look down at it and you go, okay, I can see that's got a very slight um, lift, upward lift in it, and I reckon I can use that. So that's one thing I look for. Um, the next thing is make sure once you've got everything glued on, um, it's all glued, it's all dry, and you're ready to start sawing your fret slots and doing all the fancy wancy stuff, um, before you do that, make sure that the fretboard is completely level. Um, having a sanding station or a, you know one of those um, belt sanders, uh, stationary belt sander is really, really handy if you don't have uh, a planar thicknesser. Um, it's incredibly handy because it, you can really get a very flat surface with that if you're careful. Um, and it's just, it's, it'll also show when you, when you do that, you can see little dead spots in it as well. So you can kind of, plan around that, work around that. Um, you know, these are folk guitars. I totally get that, you know, we're not, uh, we're going for a really good playable instrument, but I, I totally understand that, you know, little dings and marks and scuffs and buffs, and it's all part of the uh, the vibe of, of these instruments, which is really, really lovely. Uh, so, yeah. So the first thing I do, check your fretboards flat, install your frets, hammer them all in, press them all in, however you do it. And then the very, very first thing I do is I eyeball it. I get my good eye or my dominant eye. With me, it's my left. And I eyeball down the neck. Now, the first thing that'll happen then is that I'll straight away, I'll be able to see if my frets are level immediately. And if I find one that's a little off and I've got a little bit of angle as I'm looking down, I just move down and I find the one that's a little high and I keep my finger on it. I go, okay, where's that? I've got that. Hammer it, sand it, level it, do whatever you need to do. And then I do that again. This is if you don't have a, a fret leveling beam. And even though I do, I tend to use my eyes more than I trust anything else. Um, <laughs> having said that, I've got glasses and blinds as a bat. But you can really feel it, you can see it. So if anything needs to be leveled, uh, pressed down, uh, hammered down a little bit more, um, glued down if you're gluing, if you glue your frets in. That's something that you can do. So that's a little constructive idea on how to avoid lifting frets, how to avoid um, selling a guitar that has poor frets and is in danger of uh, ruining your reputation or um, ruining the playing experience for the person who's got the guitar. 
or um, getting a return. If it's an unplayable instrument, even if you're selling on eBay with a no refund policy, if it's an unplayable instrument, uh, eBay could argue the point and force you to return it. So that is a thought. That's something to keep in mind because I know there are a lot of builders out there who have a no refund policy. I do have a refund policy and I don't always have. Um, so I want to make sure people are happy. So that's that. Now, just to finish up, um, yes, some changes to the way uh, I build my guitars um, moving forward. Um, a couple of aesthetic changes. One is I'm considering actually moving back to a more traditional headstock, as you can see there, with the without the recess. Um, I'm noticing, you know, I'm noticing a lot of people starting to do that now, and I like being a bit different. So I want to try something that's a little bit different. So I'm going to be offsetting mine, such as this, whether it's on the top or the bottom, depends on, you know, the six six pack of strings if I get them. But I'm going to have my label on the top. Uh, I've never really pushed my brand as a brand. Um, I'm thinking about doing some changes with my branding. Um, it's going back to teaching, as I told you about. I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving primary school teaching, um, which I think would be uh, kind of elementary, middle school for America, that kind of thing. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really loving it. Um, I'm still loving building guitars i'm actually i'm absolutely loving teaching um so as i was saying a lot of my attention is going to be focused uh on the cigar box guitar builder now whether or not i'm i decide i want to start pushing that as a brand um whether or not it means that uh i may i'm thinking about discontinuing the the bourbon guitars um kind of brand as is I need a change, I need something a little bit different. Um, I might be changing my builds, changing things around a lot. I'm still here obviously for um, for all my clients in the past. Um, as I've always said, if a customer has a problem with a guitar 10 years later, I'm gonna be here, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, so I'll always have the birdwoodguitars.com um, website address, so people can always contact me there. Uh, but you know, there might be some changes coming down the track. I'm thinking about it. So, you know, any comments, have a think about it. If you've done something like this, if you kind of ch completely changed direction, changed ideas, um, you know, the Cigar Boss Guitar Builder thing, it's a, it's a big thing for me. I'm really enjoying it and I'm loving teaching people. And, um, it's, it's something that I'm having a lot of fun doing. So maybe if I'm bringing all of my branding under one, uh, one umbrella, uh, you know, that could be fun. That could be cool. Um, who knows what might happen in the future? Well, I, I decide I want to start selling some tools or some, you know, some kits and things like that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, it, it might be something I decide I want to do. But at the moment, I'm, as I said, I'm really enjoying the, the, the school teaching I'm doing and also building uh, building these guitars. So, yeah, some changes afoot, some, a few things happening. Um, this is the Schimmel Panic. Uh, this is the Schimmel Panic guitar that I'm working on. Um, you know, maybe there will be less builds um, happening, um, simply because it's really hard in Australia to get cigar boxes. Um, it's very, 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 very difficult uh, to get anything of any interest um, that's a little different, I suppose, than the, the normal Romeo and Juliet and punch boxes. I get a little tired about tired of building those. So... Um, I'll probably be building uh, less guitars, but what I'm interested in doing is actually starting to um, change things up a little bit. I might start doing some um, some guitars that might take a little while to build. Um, you know, with binding, I might look at look at doing neck binding, um, doing that myself, showing you guys how I do it. Uh, I'm a big fan of old 60s, 1960s guitars, so maybe, and I love the way their binding is generally done in one piece. Comes down the neck, comes down at the at the bottom of the neck, down down here in one piece, it's heated, and, and then it comes back up the top, so it's quite a long piece of binding. And that's a that's an old, uh, old thing that the, a lot of the J Japanese guitar builders used to do in the past. Um, I might even have one floating around here, which I'll show you another day. 
So, you know, there might be some cool stuff happening with that, um, some differences in builds, because uh, as I said, you know, I'll always have the website, I think, um, but whether or not it, it's still Birdwood Guitars, um, or whether or not it's going to be the Cigar Box Guitar Builder as a website, I'm not sure yet, so don't don't quote me on this, you know, I might be, you know, just shooting the breeze with you at the moment, getting some ideas, but it's nice to get some ideas, and some of you guys out there have got some really positive things to say and some really good feedback, so, you know, I, I value your feedback as well. Another thing for the podcast is an enormous thank you to all of those people who've subscribed to, um, not the podcast, the, the YouTube site. Um, an enormous thank you to all of those people who have um, subscribed to the YouTube site. It's amazing to think that there's a thousand, thousand subscribers, uh, which is just completely mind-blowing. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of this thing um, and... You know, it's uh, the podcast is there, but um, you know, it's it's sometimes it's very difficult to tee up interviews with people overseas and stuff like that, especially since there's a lot of builders uh, in the states that I do want to talk to. But it's just a case of trying to find time and organise things. So I'm I'm in an organisational stage at the moment, but this site is uh, really there. Any questions? Please put them in the comments below. Uh, any suggestions on things that you might like to see um, in a future future vlog or a future episode? The vlogs are easy for me because I can kind of talk to you as I'm working. Um, this fret job, by the way, has taken about an hour and a half. Okay, so not including drying time for the the inlays, which are bird's eye maple. Um, not that you'd know it. <laughs> not that you'd know it. It's because they're very small. But, um, and then on the side here, you've got, uh, if you can see those there, they're fret markers here. And these are bamboo skewers, little bamboo skewers there. So just giving you a bit of an idea of what's happening there. Okay, that's it. Uh, go and build something, go and have fun. Um, I'll be back with uh, another video, prop, maybe even tomorrow, because I'm, I'm trying to finish off the... Um, the uh, Retro Electric, um, uh, the one with the built-in effects pedal. So I'm hoping to finish that actually tomorrow and get that in the post this week to my client. Uh, so that one, that should be pretty cool. So I'll show you a few things on that tomorrow. All right, have a good one. Take it easy. Bye-bye.